What is going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video on the channel and this one's going to be a big video because we've played a bunch of tournaments and some cash games in St. Martin here and they're fun. But this one is the one that we came here for. It's the $1,700 main event. Buy-in is already more than like triple than most of the other buy-ins and the cool thing about winning this one or the cooler thing is not only like the 50, 60, $80,000 for first place, but these rings here, look, they're like really cool, right? WZP circuit rings obviously means a lot and I don't take them for granted, but the main event you get diamonds on them So that's definitely a ring that I would want to have it would be really cool to add another ring But with diamonds to the collection so gonna go for it. It's a big tournament Let's try to run this up. Thanks for tuning in and let's get into the action So we hop into the $1,700 main event with 35,000 starting in chips here diving into the action We're at level 8 now and I've chipped up to 50,000 and this interesting spot starts off with six seven of clubs in the small blind there's a low jack open to 1200 who i deem as a tight player the hijack makes the call and i decide to make the call as well here out of position and of course big blind is enticed to be in here so we're going multi-way to a flop of king four five rainbow amazing flop with one club out there and our open-ended straight draw action checks to the low jack player who bets out 2300 when the action folds to me, I'm obviously continuing with our straight draw, up and down cards, an 8 or 3 would give us the nuts. I'm in here, I call, and the big blind calls as well. Let's try to bank, and the turn is a miraculous 3, baby. Let's go, not even a flush draw in sight, and sitting with the nuts, I thought about leading here. Trying to get some value from a player who might be sticky, but I think better of it, and check, action checks around. We're off to a river now, which comes another board pairing three, and I'm thinking after action check through, I probably should have bet the turn, but it's time to make up for value here. Trying to bet big, make up for the lost value that I could have had on the turn, I decide to go into the field and bet out 12,000. The big blind thinks about it, and from my perspective, he's definitely one that does not like to fold, and... Hoping he calls, he does stick some chips in the middle. The low jack folds, I show my hand and win. Pretty big pot early on in this tournament and now I am double starting stack with over 70,000. In the next hand I get moved and we pick up sixes on the button. There's a plus one open to 2,000 and this player has been pretty active raising three hands in a row now but seems like a solid player. I make the call with my pair and everyone folds. Heads up to a flop of jack 4-4 four, four, to clubs, and now he bets out 4,000. Already thinking that this hand is a little strange on this paired board, I have a pair of sixes, which is pretty strong for the most part. Anyways, I'm confused, but too strong to fold, obviously. I make the call and see a turn, which is the eight of spades. Not amazing. A card over my pair is obviously not great, but eight shouldn't be too relevant, as how many eights is he going to have in this spot? But he continues again for 8,000 trying to tell the story that he has a strong hand betting pretty big both streets and i think this is just a really weird spot to be in theoretically here i feel like i have to call although i'm not sure in the moment as this player should have plenty of bluffs but calling with third pair here obviously isn't a super comfortable spot to be in Ultimately, I end up making the call here. We're in position and hoping to see a clean river, which is the ace of diamonds. Oh, dear God. This is this is not a good river. Out of all the river cards I wanted to see, this one might be the worst one. Not only does it smash his range, but he could also just bluff at this card relentlessly as it's going to hit him a lot more than me. And I'm screaming for him to check. He thinks about it for a long time and ends up checking. I snap check this one back, hoping to see I'm good, and he shows king nine of clubs, and I win. Thank freaking god this player didn't bet the river as I would have had to fold, but this pot goes my way, and the chip stack is just getting bigger and bigger. I end off the night with an insignificant 6-7 offsuit hand, where I end up bluffing on the flop and turn and get my bluff through. Anyways, not a lot of action here to end off night one of the main event, but I ended up bagging over 100,000 chips, entering day two as a pretty large stack, and the best part is I only bought in one time, 
Let's go. Okay, ending off the night. We didn't play many like significant hands, but all things considered, things went well. There's like half the field left that entered. So there's gonna be a day one B that's gonna happen tomorrow. I get a break technically. We'll see if I actually end up playing tomorrow or not, but it's nice to just bag after one bullet, which is amazing quite the dream and we'll play day two in two days we'll see how it goes the guaranteed prize pool is 200,000 so first place might be a little juicy this is a three-day event so we'll have fun we'll continue this vlog in day two wish us luck I'm gonna catch some sleep it's like 2 30 3 a.m I'll see you guys, uh, I guess, in two seconds. So the start of the next day before day two of the tournament starts, we actually end up going to a parrot farm on the island of St. Martin. I was recommended that this was a must-see place where there are over a hundred different species of birds. You could feed them or you could watch them make out or something. Anyways, uh, you know. Enough of the bird porn, we're gonna start into day two with one hour levels and into level 11, one of the first hands getting dealt in. I pick up ace seven offsuit in the cutoff and raise it up to 2,700. The small blind, the chip leader in this tournament so far, and I play with her a bunch, she makes the call and the big blind calls as well. So three ways in position and the flop is magical. Ace, king, seven, two hearts. Action checks to me and with 6,500 in the middle, I decided to bet on the smaller side to 1500. Definitely could have gotten bigger with obviously a very strong hand, but when both players make the call for 1500, we've got some action. We're off to a turn, which is the five of diamonds and action checks to me again, and certainly time to size up. Like I said, the small blind player is playing plenty deep, and I want to get a lot in the middle, so I size to 8500, and we get exactly what we wanted. Small blind player makes the call with a big stack and the big blind folds. So a fun pot brewing here so far with two pair. The river is a queen. The flush draw misses, but she actually ends up reaching for chips and ultimately ends up sizing to a bet of 22,000. And I think I just have a pretty easy snap call here. I don't think raising is too great considering that there's not many worse hands that could call me. So I don't want to go broke as she's one of the very few stacks that cover me. So I call. She has king queen of spades and two pair versus rivered two pair. Quite the cooler. And I rack up a really big pot to start the day. Things are going well in my favor. I pick up queen jack of spades in the small blind and there's an only gonna open to 3200. The cutoff makes the call, button makes the call, and I'm in here as well with some suited Broadway cards. The flop comes 10, 9, 6, all diamonds. So flopping an open-ended straight draw here, I check it over to the only one player who bets out 4,600. And when the cutoff and button both fold to me, I'm happy to just peel one card and see what happens. I make the call and the turn is the seven of spades now. And I think that this is actually a pretty great card to bluff on. Given the board texture, it's going to be pretty hard for him to have strong hands unless they're just flushes. So I go for it and lead for 8,500 this time. And this player stares at me at the board and into my soul for a while and ends up just making the call. So I'm feeling pretty good about it as I think really strong hands would have raised, hoping to either make my hand or fire the river. The river is the five of spades. Total blank on this board and I've just got to go with the story of having a strong hand. I bump up the sizing to 35,000 now. He doesn't look super happy about this situation and ends up folding. Nice start to day two. First two hands are going exactly my way. Going up to level 12 now, there's a cutoff open to 3,500. He's sitting with about 20,000 and action folds to me. I peel pocket jacks. Seems like a pretty easy decision here, so I go all in. This player takes his time, doesn't snap call, so I feel pretty good about it, but ends up making the call. We end up seeing that we're up against ace 10 off suit. So I'm in pretty good shape to win this until an ace high flop. Uh, doesn't feel good as I'm left to drawing to two outs, turns a brick and the river bank jack. Two outer for the win to stack this opponent. It's a relatively small pot considering how big these pots are yet so far, but definitely crucial to chip up, get some run good on my side and win this one. With things going my way, I pick up queen nine offsuit in the hijack and decide to raise this one to 3,600. Probably a little too loose, but I'm here to play pots. The big one makes the call. Seems like a pretty solid euro here. Going to a flop of jack 10, four rainbow. 
He checks it over to me, and once again, I have another open-ended straight draw. I decide to fire out 5,200 into the middle here. And for 5,200, he decides to check raise, piles in more chips in the middle to 12.4 thousand. He's sitting with maybe 20 thousand behind this raise, and I'm open-ended here, so drawing to the nuts, I'm just never folding here. Along with having one over card to the board, I'm thinking that if I just make the call, he's got about a two-thirds pot-sized bet behind. So I certainly could play in position and go with that route, or I just ride the tournament variance and just go all in. I'm thinking this player can check raise a lot of one pair holdings or bottom pair plus backdoor holdings. And against half of his check raising hands, I'm doing pretty okay. So I'm happy to gamble and I'm pretty much only crushed against two pair or king queen. That would really suck, but I have a big stack. I'm gambling. I go all in and he snap calls. Snap calls are never fun to hear. And he ends up showing us jack four of hearts. Time to hit, right? The turn four completely draws our hopes dead. I'm drawing dead here and I pay him his stack as he boats up. He had 34,000 in chips and now my chip stack's down to 150,000. After losing that one, time to rebound. I pick up pocket fives in the small blind. There's a cutoff raise to 5,500. The button makes the call upon a really big stack. And I'm thinking here, if the button wasn't in here, I easily could raise. But ultimately, I just make the call. Big blind makes the call as well. So four ways to a flop of Jack, Jack, Deuce, two diamonds in the club. Action checks to the cutoff player who bets out 8,000. The button folds and here with a pair on a paired board here. Thinking that my hand's going to be ahead a lot of the time. I make the call and the big blind folds. Going heads up to a turn, which is the eight of clubs, two flush draws on the board, board's a little bit more connected with some straight draws as well. I check it over to him, but he decides to check back. We're off to a river now, which is the three of clubs, so shouldn't really change too much as the backdoor flush draw got there. I check again, hoping to get the showdown, but he decides on another option. He decides to go all in, and it's 48,500 chips and I think for a while. Just have no idea what's going on. Why is this line being taken? I am just all around very, very confused. I don't think this all in makes any sense in my head right now, and it doesn't really scream like value at all, but the issue is that playing in this field of players, I don't think anyone is really going to go all in as a bluff, especially on the river for their tournament life. But I'm trying to find hands that's gonna play this way. And I don't see a Jack playing this way at all for value because why would they ever check back on the turn? An overpair obviously bets again as well for those same reasons. And I have a really good bluff catcher. I pretty much only lose to pocket eights or pocket threes and obviously full houses are hard to make and my hand serves as a good bluff catcher being that I unblock all of the draws that he could have and it's not connected to the board. Pocket fives doesn't connect with 10-9, doesn't connect with queen jack, doesn't connect with any clubs or diamonds. So, okay, screw it. Someone show me a bluff. I'm hoping he bluffs. I toss in a chip for a call. And he has pocket freaking threes. That sounds about right. No bluffs here for all in pots. And my chip stack goes down to 90,000. I give him 50,000 and I'm not feeling great anymore. All right, we're on dinner break. I have like 85K, not a lot going on. Just walking across the street to the resort where there's like free buffet and whatever. If you stay there, so that's the plan. Uh, I'm just gonna get some food with Alex, girlfriends, for about 70 minutes, but pretty frustrated at just myself with not learning how to fucking fold one time. It's just crazy. No one here is bluffing, especially for the, well, no one's here bluffing in general. No one's here bluffing for the tournament life, and I can't find a fucking fold with fourth goddamn pair, so just pretty tilted at myself. I have like less than 30 bakes when I come back. They just announced the prize pool where uh, I'll update you guys here where it's a little bit more quiet. They updated the prize pool where there's um, 75 players left, 27 make the money. First place is like 92K or something like that. So I'll just play my 30 bigs as best as I can moving forward and try to move on because shit already happened, but did not need to lose 48,000 in chips. 
you're gonna stop talking about it, stop thinking about it. Let's just regroup and uh, I'll see you guys in 60 minutes. Coming back from dinner break, having to reset and cool down after the pocket five's hand. I pick up ace jack offsuit in the cutoff. There is an ungun player who limps, low jack limps, and a high jack raise to 6,500 on a big stack. I'm playing in position of this player. There's a ton of people interested in the pot, and I think the best way to play this hand is to go for a raise. Try to isolate, or maybe just try to take it down preflop. I three bet to 15,000, and action folds around to the ungun player who ends up limp jamming. He goes all in now for 43,000 and action folds all the way to me. I'm thinking in my head, like a limp all in for his entire stack must be a premium, right? After I three bets, it's only 10 big blinds more for me to call. Granted, it's about half of my stack and I think I'm just in a very annoying spot. I'm hoping to be in here for a flip. This turn of events is obviously just really unfortunate, but hoping to see he has a small pocket pair. I make the call and he has a pocket pair. It's just the best one though, just aces. Ace Jack is just not gonna win this one after a run out. I lose, my stack went from doing really well in this tournament down to 42,000 and either I'm just playing pathetic poker or I don't know, really disappointed at myself at this turn of events in this tournament here. And even more unfortunate is that the very next deal, the player that I just doubled up ends up punting king six into a set of eights going all in on the flop. So I don't know, man. Nice hand to this dude. Happy I gave him some chips, but he just gave them right back. Two deals later, after the ace-jack debacle, I end up picking up ace-10 offsuit in early position and raise it preflop. The player to my left makes the call and action folds to the button, the guy that I double up who no longer has a big stack. He goes all in for 16,000 after his punt and action folds to me. I have under 20 big blinds, so ace-10 off, I'm just gonna go for it. I rejam and the player to my left also calls. That can't be good news for me at all. And we're going three ways all in. My ace 10 is up against ace queen, the player on my left, and the button has king eight offsuit for some reason. So I'm gonna need some help and the flop comes. 10 high. I find the sick three outer against a dominating ace and the run out comes clean and we're riding the roller coaster variants of tournaments going up and down and back up. My stack is at 115,000 after ending up in suck out city population me. Feels like I got a lifeline that I desperately needed winning this hand three ways. There are 66 players left. Let's make the money in this thing. On the comeback trail right now and in the next level, I'm in the small blind and I see some action. The cutoff raises to 7,000, the button three bets to 22,000, and I peel pocket sevens. Oh dear God. Facing all this action from the latest position players, they certainly can have wide ranges and I decide to count out my stack. At this point, I have 90,000 total and can I ever talk myself out of not jamming? I think the standard GTO play would be to go all in, given I have about 30 big blinds. Along with that, these two players have been pretty tight. So if I go all in, they could also just fold better hands or hands that I'm flipping against as well. So I don't know. You can't win tournaments without being in uncomfortable situations. And this one, four bet jamming pocket sevens is certainly an uncomfortable one. I decide to pull the trigger and go all in. The cutoff quickly folds and the button, not so much. He certainly takes his time going over his options and I am sweating this one out. Both players obviously cover me. This button player has a massive stack and my stack really wouldn't be much compared to his, but ultimately he ends up finding the fold button and this was just huge. Taking down over 30,000 in chips preflop without any contention. I'm gonna call that one a success and I'm just gonna take the chips and move on quietly. Trying to move on quietly, but the very next deal, I pick up aces on the button, fist pumping so hard in my head right now. Even better, the player to my right in the cutoff raises to 8,500. 
and obviously I want more. I just four bet ripped it into them relatively light and this time I have aces. I re-raised to 23,000 and folds around to this cutoff player who ends up making the call. Okay, we've got action. The flop comes king, queen, five, two hearts. Come on, I'm hoping he has a king here somehow. He checks it over to me and I'm going to bet small. I bet out 16,000 here, but he folds quickly. Unfortunate to not make more here, but still massive back-to-back -back hands, and I'm all the way back up to 157,000. In the next interesting spot, I pick up king-queen offsuit in the low jack and raise this one up to 7,000. Folds around to the small blind player who ends up making the call. From my opinion, he seems like a pretty competent player and should know that he should have a narrow calling range here playing in the small blind. Well, after all that, the big one decides to go all in, but it's only 8,500 total. So 1,500 more, no decision. I call, small blind calls. So we're going three ways, one all in, going to a flop of king 10, nine, two spades. He checks it over to me, and I actually think I should check this a lot of the time. As we're playing a dry side pot, no one's really ever bluffing, and I'm not bluffing with top hair. Anyways, I decide to bet 7,500, hoping he connected with the board some way. And for 7,500, he makes the call. Okay, got another big pot brewing here. The turn is a brick deuce of diamonds. He checks again for a second time. And now, as I'm thinking that I should have checked on the flop, I guess I want to check on the turn as I think he's going to have a lot of strong hands on this board. If I'm betting here, I'm only targeting worse kings and that's pretty hard to have on this board or he just can have a spade draw, but I end up checking back and seeing a river, which is the 10 of spades. Not the most amazing card as now the spade draws that I was ahead of, I'm behind, but when he checks again for a third time, now it seems pretty obvious that I have the best hand. Gotta go for value and hoping he somehow has a hand like king eight, king jack, who knows, but I go for a fairly big bet of 35,000 and Upon this bet, he immediately doesn't look happy. So giving off this tell with his face, I'm confident that he won't go all in and I don't have to face a bad decision. Thinking I'm ahead here, I am praying for a call. Ultimately, he ends up tanking and calling. I show he has King Jack of Hearts freaking bank city for us here. I'm all the way back with my chip stack. After almost being eliminated, I have over 200,000 in stack and things are just going swimmingly. All right, last time we spoke like this, it was maybe four hours ago. I was pretty upset and going on dinner break. We played for three levels um, at one hour each level and played a lot of fucking poker. We're on a break right now. One hour levels like take forever and we're gonna be playing for a while. I think we have uh, two more hours left of poker, it seems, and we haven't made the money yet. There's about 40 players left, 27 make the money, and I feel like I just got a second chance, second life. Um, after that, like, semi-triple up with ace-10 versus ace-queen and king-8, and that was where the tournament life was supposed to end, and we've ran it the hell up from there, pretty amped, and I was just pretty carded for the last hour, just folded. Stack is around, like, 220k, something like that, we'll see, and hopefully we'll just make it to the money by the end of today two more hours we're playing till 4 a.m today try to run it up first place is 92k and a beautiful diamond circuit ring we're gonna go for that wish us luck and i'll try to grind it out pretty tired right now though two more hours left of this day let's go progressing to level 17 now after the break i have pocket kings in early position i raise it up to 11,000 pre-flop here and get a lot of action low jack small blind and big blind are all interested in the pot we're going four ways to a flop of jack, five, six, two spades. Action checks it to me here, and with my overpair, certainly going to go for value multi-way. So I decide to bet out 16,000. The low jack d decides to fold, so now I can play this hand in position. And surprisingly, both small blind and big blind calls. So definitely have a massive pot brewing here with over 90,000 in the middle. Let's see a turn, which is the 10 of diamonds. All right, I'm certainly committing stacks here now with my overpair on a relatively safe turn. If someone has jack 10, so be it. Action checks to me and I bet out 65,000. And for 65,000, both players fold quickly. So not gonna complain. Won a big pot, don't need to be greedy and win more chips. I'm just happy to be chipping up and not losing. 
In the following hand, I pick up Jack-10 offsuit in the big blind. There's an only gun open to 11,000. This guy has a massive chip stack covered in the table, and when action folds to me, certainly have a playable hand, so I make the call. We're off to a flop, which comes 987, the nuts. I get so excited, I flip my phone onto the ground, unfortunately. Okay, let's just try to reset real quick. Anyways, I start with a check, hoping he'll find a way to blast into it, but he ends up checking back. We're going to a turn, which comes a five, so any six makes a straight now. Don't think he's gonna have a strong hand on this board, but gotta go for value, so I size up to 22,000. And he calls, surprisingly. Actually surprised to get action here. And like I said, I'm not expecting his hands to ever hit this board. But here we are. Let's see a river, which is a brick deuce. The most brick of all cards to see. It's amazing. And if he can call a big turn bet, let's see if he can call a big river bet. I size up to a chunky amount of 75,000. And this player goes into the tank, putting him into a tough spot. I'm thinking maybe he can have an over pair or two pair that decides to check on this flop for some reason. I'm not entirely sure, but he ends up tossing a chip for a call. Yeah, I'm going to show my nuts on the table, sir. Don't get disgusted, but give me your 75,000. It's coming right into my stack. He fires his cards in the muck and... We win a chunky pot, but there is no time wasted as the very next deal. We get involved again in the small blind with eight, nine of spades and action folds to me. I decide to limp it over to my opponent here, just won a massive pot against. With my limp, he raises massive to 20,000. Okay, well, I have a really playable hand and he's raising so big. Maybe he's just tilted from the last hand or maybe he also has a good hand himself. Regardless, it's time to battle again. I go make the call and see a flop of ace nine four, two clubs and a spade. With middle pair here, I check. He bets out 25,000, so almost half pot. Definitely plenty of equity on this board here as I have two pair draws, I have some spade combos, and I beat a lot of air. So I make the call and see the turn, which is the 10 of spades. Oh boy. I check again to him and he decides to blast off 65,000 in the middle an absolutely insanely massive bet. I just got a bunch of his chips pushed my way. Is there ever a way in the world here where I can find a fold? This player has 150,000 behind and this bet, I mean, I could just go all in or I could call and get it all if I bink the river. That's one option or option number two could just be conservative. Fold my equity, conserve my chips, don't have to battle the other massive stack of the table. I just got these chips, right? Ultimately, look, I'm here to win this tournament, not just try to run deep and cash here. So winning means I have to get all the chips. Why not start with this, guys? I make the call and hoping to bink on the river, trying to see a black spade. It is the black seven of clubs. Damn it, man. So freaking close to binking. I check and he quickly checks back. I show my hand and he surprisingly has a premium himself, ace queen of hearts. So this hand didn't work. My chip stack goes down, but I could have had a massive, massive pot go my way. All right, it's break time again and let's go over some stuff. I haven't actually gone over that many hands. We've played two hours that we're going to enter after this break, the last level of the day. There are 32 players left. 27 make the money and I am short. You haven't seen that many hands because I haven't played that many hands. I've been card dead for a while now and every hand I have played, I've lost. So I'm sitting with like 150K. I just paid the blinds, which is nice, but they're going up. Oh, I'm actually, gonna, I have less than 20 bigs. Not a good spot to be in. Five left to make the money. ICM is gonna be pretty huge. I'm gonna be folding a lot and I just don't want to be all in in this situation, but if it comes to it, then so be it. I don't know, it's just, I'm not in a good spot to be in right now and maybe we can navigate through this thing. We have one level left, one hour left till the day ends and that's all I got, I don't know. I'm not feeling amazing about it, but uh, we'll just try to grind it out. Hope for the best, let's try to get lucky. Okay, after break, we're at level 19 now. Blinds are massive and my chip stack is tiny. I'm in a pretty awful situation and the first hand from Riddick, I pick up ace five of diamonds in the button and this is just gonna be an all in at most stack depths. The low jack player raises to 16,000 on an 80,000 stack. 
Not much going on here, but this hand is too good to fold and definitely just gonna go all in. I jam and this guy just shows pocket queens. He's not showing his hands because he's folding, it's it's because he's certainly in here and why wouldn't he just flop top set? Basically flopping us dead and ends up rivering quads. That's a pretty good hand, sir. So I give him most of my chips and now I'm down to 67,000. The very next deal, I pick up ace deuce offsuit and for my tournament life, I just have to win this. I jam. Luckily, everyone folds, so I chip back up just a hair to 87,000. There are 30 players left, and this is just the ultimate sweat. And the next deal, I'm in the big blind and pick up eight deuce off suits. This is not the premium I wanted to see, and I'm gonna have to give this one up. Down to 71,000 before being in the small blind and folding my garbage holding. Down to 68,000 now in stack with 29 players left and one orbit goes around until I see my big blind. I have to pay my big blind sadly with 51,000 behind and sweat time, let's see something good. I peel the good old 8-6 off suits. Gonna have to fold this one against another under the gun open. Then small blind, need something to bail me out and I pick up king nine of spades, yeah. When action folds to me, this is a pretty easy all-in. Granted, the big blind has a pretty big stack and I have nothing. I go all-in when action folds to me and the big blind ends up tank folding. I pick up my big blind chips again and I'm down to 67,000. Desperately need two players to bust or just double up. The dealer heard my prayers and gives me ace king in the cutoff. Action folds to me and this is an easy all-in until the big blind has aces. The not worst hand to be up against when you have ace king basically drawing extremely slim to either hitting trip kings or a straight or a flush. And the flop comes king high. So I have two outs to stay alive and double up, but sadly it doesn't happen. And I am out in 28th place, the stone bubble. And when I'm eliminated, Everyone else has now made the money and cashed in this main event tournament. It's, uh, it's a lot of hours spent to be the bubble boy. Uh, ran deep, just not deep enough. Finished 29th, 27 get paid. It's pretty painful to spend, uh, to spend 20 hours, 20 plus hours playing poker and cashing out with zero. At least I was in for one bullet. I don't fucking know. Um, I don't know. I guess like I'm not here to min cash. I'm just here to try to win. Shit fucking happens. We are paying 27. I don't know. We are going to play the there you go. I don't know if you can hear that. They're announcing the bubble. I was not the actual bubble, but you know, close enough. Still close enough. It's 4 a.m. Cashed up. Played for 20 hours. Cashed up. Yeah, it's just painful. Thanks so much for watching. Pretty painful. Just a lot of ups and downs of poker. and It's been a lot of downs so far. But I'm um, happy to document the journey. And hopefully you guys get some entertainment out of this. See you guys in the next one. Peace.